Farmers are considered the best stewards of their lands. A new program sponsored by the Missouri Department of Agriculture is designed to recognize those farmers who are living proof of that theory. Next on Show Me Egg. Welcome to Show Me Ag. I'm your host, Kyle Vickers. Thanks for joining us. Farmers are well known for taking good care of their crops, livestock, and lands. The Missouri Department of Agriculture has a new program that seeks to recognize this tradition and enhance it by verifying best management practices. Consumers near and far can be assured that Missouri products are grown using the latest and best techniques to ensure health, safety, and quality. Richard Fordyce, director of the department, is here tonight to discuss this new program. Director Fordyce, welcome and thank you for coming. Uh, you're fairly new to this job, so let's kind of introduce yourself to uh, our, our viewing audience. Uh, you're a farmer from northeast Missouri. North, excuse me, northwest, northwest Missouri. Northwest Missouri, yes, that's right, Kyle. I, uh, I was appointed in December of 2013, so I am almost coming up on my two-year anniversary. Certainly, there's a lot to learn about uh, the director's job uh, in the department. And then, um, you know, when I came in, I felt very confident that I, was, that I knew a lot about agriculture, but I found out... Uh, since becoming director, that there are a lot of things to learn um, about the state's number one industry. Uh, we raise corn, soybeans, and beef cattle in Bethany, uh, which is in northwest Missouri. Well, there's a wide and parade from, from cotton farms and rice farms down in the Boot Hill to the corn farms in North Missouri. There's a lot to learn in there. Absolutely, there is. Uh, as I understand it, you've kind of implicated this, or instigated this new program uh, that has uh, got some design to, to recognize farmers for their stewardship. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's a program we're very excited about at the department, and it's called the ASAP program, Agriculture Stewardship Assurance Program. And the idea kind of came about when we were trying to figure out a way to champion the good things that Missouri producers are doing, whether it's, uh, whether it's a crop farmer, or a livestock producer, and really anything in between. You know, you mentioned the diversity in Missouri agriculture. So folks that manage timber, people that uh, are raising, again, crops or livestock, or specialty crops for that matter, uh, to recognize them for the good things they're doing. And then we've also... I think that I think what will happen is there'll be a spinoff from that, some some other advantages and benefits, um, but that's our primary objective. And it's a fairly simple process to get started, at least. It is, you know. Uh, certainly, uh, our producers. It's a self-certification program, uh, and they can go in and be certified in six categories: so livestock, cropland, grassland, uh, forestry, farmstead, and energy. Uh, those are the six categories. A producer could get qualified uh, and certified in all six or just one, um, depending on what best suits their needs. You, uh, we'll come back in a second, but I know you're, you're just beginning the certification program. And to help us better understand why farmers are taking advantage of this new program, we visited the Edding Homestead Farms in Concordia, Missouri. Their generational farm has been in the family since 1839, and they want to see it continue for many more generations to come. My name is Sharon Edding, and my husband Steve and I farm east of Concordia, and we've called our farm Edding Homestead Farms. It has been in the family since 1839. It was homesteaded by Steve's great-great-grandfather. Our grandchildren are the seventh generation to grow up here, so agriculture is truly important to us, and the legacy that we leave for future generations is equally important to us. I first learned about the ASAP, or Agricultural Stewardship Assurance Program, when I attended Delta Days this last September down in the Boot Heel of Missouri, and visited with John Knudsen with the Missouri Department of Agriculture. And agricultural sustainability and stewardship and responsibility are all things that our family has lived by for many years. So I was definitely interested in it, and I would like to encourage other people to be involved. The process is really easy. They, there's a form available online, or you can get a hard copy, and you have the opportunity to choose different areas. For instance, we chose livestock, we chose crops, and we chose farmstead. I believe there's pasture, hay, forestry, and I think, I think utilities or um, energy efficiency is another opportunity. And you have the opportunity when you submit the application to put in, these are things that we're already doing, these are things that we're trying to implement, or these are things that we need to work on. And once you submit the application, then you will get a farm site visit. We had ours just a week ago, and we were able to visit about some of the things that we're, we were doing. And Steve and I have been fortunate in the fact that we have been recognized by 
the governor's conference last year. We received an environmental stewards award or environmental award. And back in 2008, we received the National Hog Farmer, National Pork Board, National Environmental Stewards Award. So these are things that we were already doing, and I truly believe that almost all producers are already doing these things, not because they're required to, but because they believe in what they're doing. They want to limit soil erosion, they want to maintain clean water, and they want to do things effectively and efficiently to produce an ample, safe food supply. Benefits to the program don't come in the form of a check. They come in the form of what we can convey to consumers. Today's consumer is three to four generations re removed from the farm, and GMOs is a big issue. GMOs have lots of different effects on lots of different products that are being produced today, but a lot of people do not understand that, for instance, using a product like a Liberty soybean allows us to use fewer chemicals. Uh, we do crop scouting. We have a certified crop advisor that looks at our fields and we don't, add, we don't apply pesticides unless we have a pest problem. And it's like a prescription for what we're doing. So the benefits come in recognizing that we have to do things responsibly and if we can get all producers to sign on and do these things, which most people are doing them anyway, you're getting a certification for things that you're doing already and it's just a statement to the public and to consumers everywhere, not just in Missouri but worldwide, that we are doing things in a responsible, sustainable manner. This should be something that bodes well for the state of Missouri and I applaud the Missouri Department of Agriculture for instituting this program because it's going to be good for Missouri agriculture and as Missouri's number one industry anything we can do that promotes Missouri agriculture is going to benefit everyone in the state of Missouri. Steve and I have participated in lots of ag organizations that are pertinent to our operation for a very long time and I always encourage people to be involved with that but in Participating in the ASAP program doesn't cost you anything except a very little time filling out the application and then a sit down and a little tour for maybe an hour, maybe two with someone from the Department of Ag. It's very easy to do. I would encourage everybody to do it. It's important. We have to make this statement. We have to be the spokesperson. Gone are the days when we know we're doing things right and not talking about it. We've got to be out front. We've got to be telling our story and this is certainly one way that we can do that. Our thanks to both Sharon and Steve Edding for letting us visit with them. If you'd like to learn more about the Agriculture Stewardship Program, you can visit the website below. Uh, Director, she just did a fantastic job of selling your program for she you. She really did. You know, <laughs> Steve and Sharon are, have both been advocates for agriculture for a long, long time. I've known both of them. Uh, uh, first through Missouri Soil and Water Districts Commission uh, when I served on that commission. Uh, but they are, they are champions for Missouri agriculture. And, and as you could tell by that video, they do things the right way. And, um, and again, that's what the program is for. Number one, to champion the good things that Missouri producers are doing. Number two, hopefully, hopefully provide a conduit for conversation with consumers about these are the things that we're doing in Missouri agriculture. The things that we do across all segments are sustainable uh, with, a, with certainly uh, priority given to environmental stewardship and then ultimately with trading partners uh, that are requesting sustainable practices in the things that they source from the U.S. and Missouri specifically. That, that connection to consumers, that's the tough one because it seems like there are so many variations in today in what consumers want. You, my, my wife occasionally goes to Whole Foods or as she calls it now, Whole Paycheck, uh, but there's certain things that she wants to buy there. Other people uh, are concerned about GMOs and so on. How do, you, how do you answer consumers' concern about agriculture today? Right. Well, I think, uh, I think again, it's that conversation. And Sharon said it very well. You know, the average consumer is at least four generations removed from the farm. So when we're having conversations with folks that don't have a connection to agriculture, they can't even say that I spent the summer on grandpa's farm when they were a kid. So we've got a long way to go. Um, you know, a lot of groups have tried. Um, you know, the Missouri Department of Agriculture have, ha have had initiatives in the past to, to communicate with consumers. I just think that 
you know, we've got a good story to tell. Um, you know, and GMOs is a key piece of that. Uh, from a soil conservation, water quality improvement standpoint, what GMOs had, have allowed us to do from a, from a uh, soil conservation standpoint. So no-till, reduced till, the kind of things that we're doing, the way we're planting our crops is different because we do have those technologies available. And then Sharon, again, made a very good point about the chemistries that we're literally spraying on the field with, with the advent of GMOs and the different, um, the different traits that, that are in those plants. Uh, we are we are putting less chemistry, less chemicals on the field, and that's got to be good for all of us. That, that's a story that's a little bit tough to uh, to explain to consumers that that through other so through some technology we're reducing other uses of chemicals and so on. Absolutely, and you know again from a GMO perspective, uh, what we're doing when we're doing crop research in, in in using GMOs is we are accentuating the things in that plant that we want and diminishing the things that we don't. All of the all of the genes, all the DNA within that plant are naturally occurring there. We're just expressing what we want and diminishing what we don't. So it's, I think it's a great way to go. So I know this project has been in the planning uh, and in the works for quite a while. Are there some specific standards that you, when you go to a farm and say, this is what the standard we're looking for, for instance, for energy, or uh, is it a sustainability measure? What, what standards are you looking for? Yes, um, <laughs> it, it's, it's all of that. So, um, so again, we have the, this, is, this is the hard copy, uh, hardcover application for ASAP. And uh, again, the six different areas that you can qualify in. And so, for example, in the cropland section, uh, you know, my farm implements no-till. My farm is, uh, is implementing cover crops. We use filter strips. We use field borders, um, uh, nitrogen stabilizers, the kind of things, just, just good management practices that we, need to, we all need to be thinking about and, and, and working into our operations um, that, again, I mean, it is agriculture stewardship assurance. Agriculture stewardship assurance. As long as we're thinking along those lines, um, you know, I know that we'll have uh, we'll have a lot of producers enrolled, and we'll be doing a lot of good things for Missouri agriculture. Does a producer have to get a certain grade? I mean, right now, if you go out for your first time and you get a 90 percent or a 70 percent, or do you have to be at 100 percent? Right. And and again, we don't we don't have points allowed to each category. You know, we look at each individual application, and then we schedule an on the farm visit. We want to go see what that producer is doing, what what that producer is doing. Doing, um, planning on doing in the future and you can tell real quickly once you're there if they have that mindset that is what we want to we want to champion um, you know you can uh, just the way um, just the way they talk and, and the way they convey the message that that we're looking for um, but there are I mean there are specific requirements in here it just is not they're not allotted a, a point value so if you get a 70 you're in if you get a 69 you're not um, again, it's a self-certification. It's no cost. We want to we want to eliminate red tape if that's if that's possible in, in government. Um, and uh, we we literally want to just highlight the good things that they're doing. Talk to them. I mean, this is also this this can also be used as a vehicle for improvement. We get uh, we get a number of producers certified. You know, we know that those those producers are early adopters of technology. We know that they're progressive when it comes to uh, practices that conserve soil and improve water quality, um, nutrient management regard from a from a nutrient management regard as well. Um, and so, once we get once we get producers enrolled in the program, we'll be able to offer new technologies as they become available. Uh, offer new technologies for them. To, uh, to adopt as well. I know in Iowa, uh, I kind of follow Iowa, and there's some real serious nitrate problems down the river in Des Moines. There's a huge conflict between urban and rural. Does Missouri have those problems now that you're specifically trying to address? You know, I don't. We don't have them to the degree that, that is going on in Iowa. And, the, and the, the lawsuit that you refer to is the Des Moines Water Works are suing three northwest Iowa counties for uh, increased uh, nitro nitrogen in, in their water. And so the Water Works has to get that out at a, at a fairly high cost. Um, you know, the, the agriculture community in Iowa have, wor have worked to address that for a number of years. And so I guess what we, when we look at the ASAP program, we hope maybe that we're ahead of the curve, that we are doing things, um, that we're doing things in a proactive fashion as opposed to a reactive uh, manner. And we think that's a good approach here in Missouri. So how do we get this message to consumers where, uh, I mean, are, are grocery store chains going to require this? Are there exporters that are going to require this? How do we get this message and, and add value? I mean, the, the real reason, I guess, is probably to add value back to our farm produce. How do we get that across? Yeah, it, it is. And I think, uh, you know, as you know, anytime 
time you initiate a new program, you know, you don't have success overnight. Um, certainly we would hope by spring planting next year that we've got, uh, you know, a, a number of producers signed up. And it, you know, it can spread word of mouth through that. Uh, we also hope that our commodity organizations and farm organizations in Missouri help spread the word. Um, as far as the consumer message, you know, that'll kind of be on us. We're going to be out talking to consumers about why it's important. And again, you know, we think that the logo, um, the logo is pretty self-explanatory, um, ASAP and the state of Missouri and the Rose. You know, we hope that this logo is recognizable maybe in two or three years from now and, and, and that there may be special branded programs for Missouri products and so consumers in the grocery store can see this. But, but that's kind of on us to, to have, that, have that communication with consumers. And then from an export standpoint, you know, already importers are asking for sustainability certification. But that's done more at a, at a national level or from a national exporter. What we think will work is that the ASAP program um, could, could literally be a companion program to those national um, certifications. So, for example, if a, if a Cargill or an ADM were sourcing uh, soybeans uh, going to uh, China and there is some requirement, you know, Cargill would look and try to find and locate ASAP producers, get soybeans from those ASAP farmers. This certification then would be a companion certification to the national one. It sounds like a good plan. How, how, do, we, uh, how do we get this message out to the public? Uh, it, it seems like there's a real disconnect. I, I, I listened to Cardinal Baseball, and, and then I finally started listening to Royals Baseball. But the, in Cardinal Baseball, there's consistent advertisements, from mostly from our commodity and farm groups, trying to get this message out. What's the best way to, to get this to the public? Well, I think, you know, certainly social media is a, is a, is a key tool. Um, you know, we know in a lot of consumer uh, preference studies that have been done that consumers uh, w will make their buying decisions and will craft their ideas about food and, and, and the way we raise food. Uh, based on what they hear from their friends on social media. I mean, that is one key role. So we're, you know, we're engaged in, a social, in social media to a degree. I think we can certainly ramp that up. Um, you know, it, again, this is, we are being very um, straightforward in what we're trying to do. Um, again, tell the good story. Because, you know, I have had opportunity after opportunity to talk to consumers who know nothing about what we do on the farm. You know, they might have a, a romantic uh, view of the way agriculture is, which is not the way it is anymore. I mean, it is, it is, it is highly specialized in some cases. Lots of technology are involved. Um, but those things, those advancements and those new discoveries have put us in a place where we're able to do things from, a, from an agriculture stewardship standpoint that we've never been able to do before. Uh, this seems like an exciting new program. Let's talk a little bit about sort of the state of Missouri agriculture today. Sure. I, I know uh, it's, it's much different than it was in May and June of this year when we had over a million acres that didn't get planted. Where, where are we at in Missouri as far as the health of our industry? Yeah, it is. You know, I think, um, you know, I think, I think agriculture is good and strong in Missouri. Uh, obviously, we went through some really good times, you know, with high commodity prices and, and just recently with the high cattle prices from a producer's perspective. Um, you know, but, but we have, uh, you know, our, our, um, uh, our universities in Missouri that have ag agriculture programs, you know, are full of students wanting to get, get in and be a part of a career in agriculture. And that's not necessarily go back home and, and farm or raise cattle or raise livestock. These, you know, these young people are, are engaged in plant science and animal science and communications and marketing and things that are going to take them, you know, in a career in agriculture that will, um, you know, th that will be a lifelong career. I think things are good. You know, again, you mentioned the 1.6 million acres that did not get planted. Um, but, the, but the crops that did get planted, given the very challenging spring and summer, you know, yields were surprisingly good uh, really across Missouri. Uh, you know, and again, the cattle sector is strong, livestock sector is strong. So um, I think, you know, when you roll all those together, I think things are pretty good in a pretty good condition. I know that there's some specific projects going on to promote dairy, for instance, in Missouri. How's that going? Right. Well, so the Dairy Revitalization Act was passed by the General Assembly last, last session. Um, you know, it, it, it has three components. One, to provide a dairy plan. So where are we right now and what's the plan for the future? Two, a dairy scholars program where they will offer 80 scholarships um, for 80 students each year to go into an ag business or, uh, or dairy specific um, uh, major. And then thirdly is a reimbursement program for the margin protection insurance that dairy producers have signed up through the federal farm bill. 
Um, you know, and so you know, we, we hope to get that funded through the General Assembly uh, coming moving forward this year in the in, in the next legislative session. That, that was sort of be my next question. The General Assembly will be meeting here in a few weeks. Uh, do you have some legislative priorities? Do you see some other things coming up that you're going to have to react to? Well, you know, and again, uh, you know, that's probably better than I do. You know, the General Assembly. Um, uh, you never know what's going to really, you know. Uh, Catch, catch the attention of the General Assembly. Um, certainly we have some priorities or we have some ideas. Um, you know, we'll engage with the General Assembly, um, certainly through, also through the administration um, as, we, as we navigate through the General Assembly session. Um, you know, it's, I, I think it's an exciting time. It's, it's, a, it's a time when the people have an opportunity to be represented in state government. And you know we welcome we welcome that opportunity to talk about agriculture and the issues that affect us. Well, I know there's going to be an opportunity in just a couple of weeks or, uh, to to uh, engage and talk about agriculture. You guys have brought back the Missouri Governor's Conference on Agriculture, which had an absence of a few years, and it was always one of my very favorite events. That's coming up here soon. It is uh, December 16, 17, and 18. It'll be held at Tantara Resort at Lake of the Ozarks. It's it's a great central location. Um, you know, we we put a lot of time, and we started planning uh, a few months ago for the programming that will be uh, at the Governor's Conference. And I think that with the way we structure the Governor's Conference is we we certainly know that producers will leave there having learned something. And they'll also, they'll also leave there uh, having reconnected old relationships and a chance to visit and catch up. So it's uh, certainly a lot of things to learn, uh, but we've, we've built in time for just some downtime and opportunities to, to network and reconnect. So we're very excited about it. I, I've said many times that the agriculture community in Missouri is just a big family, and the Governor's Conference is a family reunion. I would say that's a very good description. So there's time for fun, be a lot of good food, I assume. There will be, absolutely. Any featured speakers that you want to preview? Uh, you know, we do have. We have a couple. Um, one that's going to be kind of interesting, and he works for Monsanto, and he is the Director of Engagement for Millennials <laughs> for Monsanto. <laughs> Um, you know, we heard him over at the AFA conference in Kansas City a couple of weeks ago, and, and so we're excited. Uh, we're excited to hear what he has to say to the participants. And then we also will have a presenter um, talking about the seven um, revolutions. So things that, things that are happening around us that affect agriculture that maybe we don't think about. Um, which is which I think is going to be very good as well. I, I, I love that term, the director of engagement for millennials. That's right. Uh, you know, I've got three sons that are in that category. That's maybe we need to hire one of those at our house uh, to so we better understand what's going on. Well, you know, one of the things that he'll talk about is that we don't, you and I, mm -hmm. uh, of our age um, and and time on this earth, we don't understand exactly how millennials approach situations. And so, um, anyway, it's very interesting uh, how he has. Yeah how he thinks he has a way that we can engage with millennials. Well, it's got to be through social media because uh, we'll we'll be uh, have all the kids home occasionally, and everybody's on their little device. Uh, right. uh, so that's that's going to have to be a part of it. Uh, and is there uh, uh, do you have to pre-register and so on for the governor's conference? Yeah, uh, you know, pre-registration is happening right now, and um, uh, so the the cost to register for the conference is only one hundred and fifty dollars a person, and that's all your meals, that's all of the events that that'll take place during the conference. So it's you know we get a lot of sponsorship that helps offset the cost to actually put on the conference. So $150 a person is really quite affordable. And then Tantara has a special uh, room rate for the, for the participants of the conference of $67 a night. So, That's a uh, pretty good rate for Tantara. That is very good. So uh, again, we're excited. We had almost 700 folks there last year, and uh, we expect that number to, to, to climb a little bit. Um, but again, a lot of work is done on the front end. Um, Lloyd Wilson at the Department of Agriculture does a great job lining up the program. And so we're very excited about what, we, what we're going to have to offer to producers and our industry partners and all of the folks that really just want to be a part of that family reunion of agriculture. You know, I, I know we've covered this before, but since I've got you here, I'm going to do it again. Uh, the Department of Agriculture has a big role to play for consumers in, in the way we, and I hate to use the term regulate because my, many people, but uh, remind the folks some of the things that the Department of Agriculture has responsibility for. Absolutely. You know, we have, we have a pretty large consumer protection piece. And so whether that's in weights and measures or whether that's in the feed, seed, and treated timber um, uh, uh, division and the plant industries di uh, division. Uh, we are out every day across the state of Missouri making sure what Missouri consumers is, say is going into their gas pump or is being weighed or feed that they're purchasing, pet food, um, treated timber that they're buying. Um, 
you know, we are out there every day making sure that what it says on the label or what it says on the, on the nozzle is what it is and what's coming out of the nozzle is how much you're getting and what's going on that scale is how much you're, how much you're buying. So we do have folks out every day on behalf of Missouri consumers. As I've studied the history of the U.S. and State Department of Agriculture, that was a, a key issue was regulating commerce and we're still doing a, a good job of that. One last thing, I know you've got a son that uh, you would probably like to see back on the farm. What's the future for uh, young people in agriculture in, in Missouri? Well, I think, uh, I think it's great. Um, and again, we talked a little bit about that. And so whether you, are, whether you have an, uh, a passion uh, to go back to the farm and be, be one of those producers that, you know, again, this program is for, or um, you know, all, for all the right reasons you want to go back to the farm and, and be an ag producer, I think the future is very bright. But there's also lots of opportunities in other careers that um, certainly a person that has, has an interest or a passion in agriculture today, or a person that maybe we can instill a passion or, or, uh, in agriculture, uh, certainly there's, the, the future is bright. As I understand it, there's a great demand for students who are trained in science and ready to go back into agribusiness or research and so on. There's still a great demand for that. Oh, absolutely. You know, one of the, one of the new things now is data science you know so whether it's whether it's capturing that data that we're ca that we are that we're gathering in our combines and tractors uh, or whether it's data science in a research laboratory um, you know uh, there are there is there are going to be lots of jobs in data science laboratory assistance you know who's who's going to be the next person to have the next discovery the next innovation in agriculture I think, you know, visiting with a lot of our young people in Missouri, I think maybe that's going to come from Missouri. Let's hope it does. I uh, hope so. Thank you very much for thank being you. with us. appreciate your time. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for tonight. I'd like to say thanks again to Director Fordyce for joining with us. And I'd also like to thank Sharon Edding of Concordia for taking time to visit with us as well. And we'd also like to thank you, our viewers, for tuning in to Show Me Ag. We hope you'll tune in next time for another look at a topic touching rural Missouri. For everyone here at CAMOS and myself, good night. We're also very interested in what you have to say. So if you have feedback you'd like to share with us, you can email us at showmeag at camos.org or find us on Facebook 